Brittany, Christina, and Jessica. All blonde, all beautiful, and all super talented entertainers destined for greatness. However, they weren't the only ones. At the same time, another blonde by the name of Willa Ford was making her mark as well. The careers of the three aforementioned ladies skyrocketed. Willa's, not so much, but she still managed to blaze her own trail. Then one day, she realized that she just couldn't do it anymore. Let's find out whatever happened to American pop singer-songwriter Willa Ford. Willa Ford, birth name Amanda Lee Williford, was born January 22, 1981. Raised in Ruskin, Florida, she honed her singing and performing skills at a very young age. She even scored a spot studying opera for several years in a competitive program beginning when she was around 12. She also excelled in academics, taking all gifted classes and leaving high school with a 4.25 grade point average. While she's had a lot of people helping her along the way in her music career, one of the most instrumental and surprising was NBA Hall of Famer and former Los Angeles Lakers guard Magic Johnson. He was the one to bring her into MCA Records' office after hearing her sing for him over the phone. She landed her first record deal with the label in 1999 at the age of 18 and began performing under the stage name Manda. That partnership didn't work out and she ultimately made her way over to Lava Atlantic Records a couple of years later. Around the same time, she changed her stage name. Yet another young blonde up-and-coming artist by the name of Mandy Moore was climbing the charts and Willa thought it was best to make the change to avoid any confusion. While her career was getting ready to kick into high gear, she was also healing from a recent upheaval in her personal life. Willa had just ended a long-term relationship with Backstreet Boy Nick Carter. The timing probably couldn't have been any better since she now needed a clear head to focus on her work. Previously, she had toured with the group and experienced firsthand the vicious in-person attacks from their diehard fans just for simply hooking up with a cute boy bander. Things, however, didn't stop there. Numerous anti Willa Ford websites also popped up on the internet. Willa was here, her debut album dropped July 17, 2001. She wrote most of her own lyrics and served as executive producer for most of the album. Her debut single that was released a couple of months prior called I Wanna Be Bad, featuring rapper Royce to 59 peaked at number 22 on the Billboard Hot 100 and number four on the dance chart. Some fans may even remember it as the background track to the Amanda Bynes runway scene from the romantic comedy film What a Girl Wants. As clearly displayed in the music video, even in a sea of blonde, Willa stood out in a major way compared to her counterparts with her overtly sexual dance moves and fashion choices. In a 2019 interview with The Hollywood Reporter, she spoke about why she thinks the song has received so much love over the years, especially from the LGBTQ community, saying, The song was written out of defiance and a bit of anger. I was tired of people telling me who to be. And so I think it was really relatable at the time, because I was told, you look like this, you're not allowed to be sexual. Later that year, her follow-up single called Did You Understand That was released but failed to chart at all. Willa stirred up some major controversy over the song when she claimed that the lack of interest was due to the September 11 attacks on the date of the release. She even received the Donkey of the Day Award from New York's 105.1 radio show, The Breakfast Club. Radio host Charlemagne the God even referenced several other artists who put out material on that fateful day and still managed to have successful results, such as Nickelback and Jay-Z. During this time, Willa branched out from music into advertising and television hosting work. One major break was her stint as a guest host on MTV's TRL that led to a hosting contract with Viacom, where she became the host of a couple of MTV reality shows. 
She didn't release another single for another couple of years. However, when she did, it went largely unnoticed. The song called A Toast to Men was supposed to be included on her second album titled Sexy Sex Obsessive, but it was ultimately shelled in 2003 due to record company turnovers and takeovers. Willa then stepped away almost completely from music for many years. The reasons why vary. One was the lack of hits. Another, even bigger reason, was the exhausting workload and the toll it was taking on her mentally and physically. In the same Hollywood Reporter interview, she spoke openly about confessing to her mother how she was feeling. Her mother gave her some sage advice that she followed immediately. I left New York, got on a plane, and went home to Florida. I needed to take that minute to breathe. And then I watched a lot of people have breakdowns later on because they didn't take that time. It was part of my journey, and it was the healthiest thing I could do at the time. She ended up focusing on a television and film acting career. Then in March 2006, playing right into her I Want to Be Bad image, she was featured in a nude pictorial in Playboy magazine. Later that same year, she competed on the third season of Dancing with the Stars with her partner, Maxim Chimerkovsky. In August 2007, Willa married her longtime boyfriend, NHL center Mike Modano in Athens, Texas. They would divorce five years later. If her fans didn't already know, it became obvious in the years to come that she definitely has a type. In April 2015, she married for the second time to a second athlete, NFL linebacker Ryan Neese, and they now share a son. For the most part, things seem to be running smoothly in Willa's acting career. That is until 2014. She was originally cast in the independent film Assassin's Fury but was later dropped. Producer Fabio Soldani reported to bzfilm.com that he was forced to fire her after only five days of shooting because she was, quote, a nightmare to be around. Today, Willa is a highly sought after interior designer in Los Angeles. She started her firm, W Ford Interiors, back in 2012 on the side of her acting career as an additional creative outlet. During her first marriage, she worked with a designer on her home and fell in love with the process. Over time, more and more friends kept asking her to complete projects for them. There came a point where it just became too overwhelming to juggle both jobs, so she decided to stop acting altogether and focus on her design firm full-time. In 2019, she appeared as Scott Disick's right-hand woman on E!'s new house-flipping reality series, Flip it like Disick. She works right alongside him, completely transforming multi-million dollar homes. It's definitely been a journey for Willa to come to terms with her music career not panning out the way she hoped. In a 2019 Glamour.com interview, she spoke about how initially devastated she was, but realized later that it was all for a greater purpose, saying, Those moments make you strong. They make you better. What I really know from the chair I'm sitting in today is that I can look back at that and say, thank God, that is exactly how it was supposed to go because now it's all good. Thanks for watching. Please like and share the video and subscribe for more amazing content. See you next time.